The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 242 Conflict Hearts. Dvalet pouted, having been unable to keep her conversation with Maple as quiet as she wanted. Pressed by Gerardo to explain what she knew, she grumpily narrated, Winnego hearts are pretty much concentrated badness. Hatred, despair, stupidity, you name it. Beats me where they come from. They're from before I was around. Maybe they come from actual Wendigos, or maybe they're fake. Fake? How drew up indignantly, still walking so as not to get left behind. Whose sacred heirlooms are you calling fakes, fraud? Made by ponies, yaks, whatever. Like I said, beats me. Either way, they're also really hard to destroy, and that was something the yaks figured out how to do. Turns out, all you need is a pony and... Well, she glared, avoiding eye contact with everyone. You don't need to know the specifics. The harder part was getting the pony to survive, because otherwise, it doesn't break. But if they do, and when it does, it removes that pony's cutie mark. It does who to the what now? Neonova blinked, limping along and favoring all four legs. She means brands, How sagely replied. It is a form of lingo my comrades have taken to using. I can't quite sniff out the meaning myself, but I'm sure it is very important. Whatever, Valet rolled her eyes. The point is, as far as I know, the marks would just reappear after a minute or two, so it wasn't much of a setback. Once the moonglass happened, though, they figured out you could catch the marks in an empty piece and that would stop them from coming back. She raised an eyebrow at Maple. Sound familiar, Iron Flanks? Maple gasped inwardly, recalling that Shinespark had said Valet found out everything on her own. She was testing to see if Shinespark had told her about a cutie mark and how Brain was powered. She nodded. Yes, I've heard of it. Yakyakistan invented that? Valet shrugged. Eh, something like that. Anyway, after they figured that out, the Yaks started treating their hearts like a precious resource instead of hazardous waste, since mark loss went from a temporary side effect to something they could exploit. At least, in the place I lived, they hoarded them and started doing all sorts of crazy experiments with cutie marks. It was a research station way out in the mountains on the eastern edge of the glacier. Prime middle of nowhere kind of place. What were they doing? I don't know. What would you do if you could separate your soul from your body? She shivered. I left before it was even a year old and came straight here. One of the upsides to working in Iron Ridge is that Moonglass is super rare, so I don't have to deal with it much. But it was still there, Maple reminisced, thinking of white chocolate. Pointedly, she didn't let her mind wander down the paths of what a markless pony could do. But how did for her? Remove your very soul? He scratched at his head. Well, I suppose I would seal it somewhere safe. Would that protect me from perishing were I to be tragically eviscerated? Wouldn't that turn you all zombified? Neonova asked, tilting his head. If you took the little pony in your head and locked him up outside? Gerardo tapped a talon. Are you quite sure a pony's mark and their soul are one and the same? What of those many who never earn theirs or, like griffins, who cannot? Even were one to hold a position of some type of superiority, even ponies who do manifest marks spend the earlier stage of their life without. This all seems quite mysterious. One question at a time, Valet shouted, muttering under her breath. You guys are incorrigible. If Selma really wanted to get out of my coat, he should have just pestered me with questions. She coughed once they were silent. All right, I don't know if you can make yourself immortal, I'd be surprised if that wasn't something they tried. You don't go all noodly, you're just like you were when you didn't have a mark, and Birdo, I seriously have no clue. Now, do you mind? I don't know a lot about this, I hate not knowing stuff, and that's why I didn't want to talk about it in the first place. Point is, bad stuff is bad. The end. Sullenly, she walked away. Maple chased after her, the group still wandering through the Flame District tunnels. Blay, wait! Her hooves pounded against stone as she drew up alongside her. Is there anything else bad you know they can do? I know you said they were considered hazardous waste before the moonglass was found. We really could use knowing what the yaks want them for. Yeah, Valet sighed. They could make ponies fight over them. Maple's eyes widened and she glanced back at Howe and Neonova. Pretty much, 
Billy shrugged. I have no idea how. Maybe they're telepathic and alive somehow. Maybe they just have an effect on nearby emotions. I can't detect when I'm near them, but I can detect ponies under their influence, so I'm guessing it's the latter. Fortunately, you're so meticulously nice that I really doubt you had any problems with it. Visions of the past things she had done with the orb surfaced in Maple's mind, making her squirm uncomfortably. In the water district, while robbing the crates, was that why she and Starlight had taken it instead of what she presumed was Moonglass? Had White Chocolate had any qualms about giving it back to her? Would anyone be drawn to it, sitting in her cabin on Shinespark's ship? Had Gerardo even put it there? She clenched her eyes, grimacing. Even simply being told was making her doubt her friends. Finally, she considered how carrying it had made her feel. She had become exhausted to the point of collapse, weary with muscle pains and gaining no energy from long periods of rest in a motorized cart and at White Chocolate's house. Perhaps her cutie mark had somehow shielded her from the heart's magic and caused it to take a physical toll on her body instead? She hoped that was the case. At least, that would mean the damage had worn off. Then again, Vully continued, think about someone who isn't all friends with everything. Someone who already has it in for someone else and is just looking for a reason to fight. Maybe food is scarce. That's a really big problem for ponies in Yakakistan. It's not a very big influence, but if tensions are already high, it can be all that's needed to push something over the edge. From there, you get superstitions and going on from those. She kicked into a faster pace, pulling a few steps ahead. Yeah, they wound up with a reputation. Hmm... Gerardo was following along behind. I suppose this could line up with what we know. A conflict in the water district seems nigh inevitable, as Selma seeks to profit off it and fully believes it will happen. We lack any knowledge of Herman's motivation for starting such a battle, but the fact that these hearts can apparently cause wars of their own is cause for correlation. But if the effect is as minor as you say, why would they go to such extreme lengths to procure some, and then ship them as the centerpiece in this plan. How shrugged. My, uh, sacred intellect pales at this problem. Comrades, any suggestions? The way I see it, Gerardo continued, talents clicking against the floor, is that this conflict will be on a much larger scale than what the hearts are known to create, yet still much smaller than the entire city. So far. Thus, I can see two explanations. One is that the Yak seek to amplify the power of the heart somehow to broaden its effect, thus expanding any conflict that is sparked, though that still doesn't explain the why and could also be achieved through easier means. Furthermore, we have no clue how such a thing would be accomplished. His eyes shone brightly in their sockets as he prepared to finish. On the other side, it is entirely possible that, and forgive me for my uneducated scientific failing, it could be less that the hearts are a catalyst for the war, so much that the war is a catalyst for the hearts. Bah? Valet stared sideways at him, along with everyone else. Um, Jordo fidgeted under the stairs. What I mean to say is, if the hearts are capable of affecting conflict, perhaps conflict is capable of affecting the hearts? Valet postulated that they could have been created in the first place, rather than actual organs from demons of myth. What if the entire purpose of driving the districts to blows is to create a source of disharmony and strife to enhance them somehow? Perhaps for some experiment bringing them closer to their ultimate goal that requires something more powerful than the existing hearts? Everyone continued staring at him. You know, Neonova pointed out, there's a big, fat old war going on up in Barsadel right now. If a little punch-punch-pow is all it takes, why not slip on up there and borrow that old stuff? I, well, Gerardo hesitated. In truth, I have no idea. I suppose that's a hole in my theory, isn't it? He grinned crookedly. While we're speculating about Varsadel, though, I did happen to adventure there many years ago. It was a politically interesting place, and I'm not completely baffled by its present state of war. That said, 
The conflict was just beginning when I left the final port of civilization on my seaward journey to Anridge, and as such, I'm quite behind on news. Does anyone know for certain that Yakakistan is not behind the war there as well? Maple's ears folded. Are you saying you think Yakakistan is trying to send the rest of the world to war or something? Like, like what happened 40 years ago? I can't say that I am. Gerardo shook his head. Did we have this conversation before? I have a vague memory of it being stated by myself or another that the last Yak war was an internal affair. Regardless, however, I'd wish them luck in attempting to destabilize or conquer the rest of the world, because they would fail. Not only are the Plains of Harmony virtually inaccessible, but the Griffin Empire is far too stable and geographically removed from the clout for the axe to have any bearing there. Maple sadly smirked. You know, I recall a certain someone telling us Ironwood was far too stable for anything to happen while we were here when we were deciding to go, too. Giordo chuckled nervously. Well, Ironridge doesn't very well have a millennia-old goddess protecting it, does it? The peacekeeping abilities of economic councils, foreign powers, and intense regional animosity pale in comparison to someone who's seen everything before. Well, the Plains of Harmony are also protected by the mountains, Maple Side. Though they do sound like a place I'd like to visit someday. I was talking about the Griffin Empire, though. A smug grin spread across Gerardo's face. Ah, well, you see, so was I. Maple nearly tripped. Are you pulling the Howanator's tail? How asked, incredulous. You mean to say that you found a rock to grow up under where you never even heard of the Griffin Goddess? Gerardo nodded sagely. Such places certainly exist, though I'm mildly surprised you haven't at least come across mention of her in your life. Filling you in, I imagine, would be most... Hey, can the chatter! The lady suddenly hissed, pulling against the wall. The rumble of machinery was loud in the air, vibrations seemingly coming up through the floor, and the air temperature was steadily increasing. We're at the part where we have to either sneak, look like we belong here, or beat up anyone who gets in our way, and even me being me, I'd really prefer the ways that don't leave trails right now. Unhappily, Gerardo shut his beak, leaving Maple wondering just when she'd get another chance to ask. End of chapter 242